Right, if I stop the share, I sent. Hi, everybody. Hopefully, you should be able to see me. Welcome. This is um, e commerce, the new normal series from Sell Beyond. And today, we're looking at used data to understand consumers on Amazon. Um, I hope everyone can hear me and do put a question in the question and answer box if you can't hear me. So uh, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you that haven't met me before. My name is Eloise Finch. Um, I run Sell Beyond, which is a multilingual marketing agency that helps brands grow on Amazon in English, French, German, Spanish, Italian and Dutch. So welcome if, uh, if we haven't met before. Um, this, this webinar is being uh, run in partnership with New Anglia Growth Hub. Sell Beyond is based in Suffolk, so New Anglia Growth Hub has been helping us with some promotion. If you're based in the area, um, do avail yourself of their, their services. They're really awesome. Susie, Susie Simmons is a great events manager and um, knows all the people. So thank you for, thank you for that. Um, before, we, before we get started with the content, I'm just going to go back to sharing my screen and just remind everyone why we're here, what we're going to look at today. So the focus of today's session is using data to understand consumers. So the first thing that we're going to look at is what's so special about Amazon data. For those of us that are selling a little insight into who is buying our products on Amazon and are we cannibalizing our web sales? And this is also, even if you're not selling on Amazon, this is stuff that you will be able to apply to your own businesses or be able to look at other people um, and figure out what they're doing. What do our customers want? Question we all ask ourselves, right? We should always be asking ourselves. Um, but in this case, what can we, how can we use Amazon data to figure out what our customers want? And then finally, using customer data to improve sales. That's what we all want. We want to make, we don't want to analyze data for data's sake. We want to use customer data to improve sales and I'll give you some tips and some actions to do that. Um, at the end of the webinar, there will be a pop-up once you close your Zoom to go to a survey form. And I'd really appreciate if you could um, allow that survey form to pop up. It will um, ask you if you have any other ideas about the webinar to give you a bit of feedback. And it will also allow you to book in some time with me via Zoom. If you want me to help you find out what's going on with your own customers on Amazon, I'd be happy to do an hour consultation with you on that. If you'd like a free strategy review of your Amazon and your challenges, absolutely book in one of those. And if you'd like to know what further free webinars you can attend in April and May, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you the, the sign up links for all of them. So do allow that pop up to, to come up and then you can make the choice of what's right for you. So the first thing I'd like to jump into in the sense of what's so special about Amazon data is all the crazy tags that pop up when we shop on Amazon. So we're starting off by the consumer perspective. What happens when we shop on Amazon? What do we see? So this is what comes up, came up this morning when we get, um, when we put in strong coffee as a search term on Amazon. And this is indeed a brand that says strong coffee to wake the dead, which probably we all need at four o'clock in the afternoon. Now what's so special about this coffee also helps us understand what's so special about Amazon data. And what I want to point out is a number of things for those of you that don't know. When we're shopping on Amazon and we see the tag that says Amazon's choice, we, you need to know that that was not chosen for you by Amazon. Amazon is not choosing it, of course. It's a platform that's based around a lot of algorithms. Amazon's choice means that for people that search for strong coffee, they are most likely to buy this brand right now. It might change in two weeks' time, might change um, three weeks' time. Today, if you uh, search in Amazon for strong coffee, Amazon's choice means you are most likely to buy this brand. And it's, so Amazon's choice is really a flag about first-time buyers and what they will buy after searching for the first time. Because naturally, if you end up loving strong coffee to wake the dead, you, you may not actually want to um, put that in a search term next time you want. You can just do a reorder from your order page you might, um, you might not be searching for strong coffee to wake the dead. You'll just reorder it. Therefore, Amazon's choice is um, an algorithm for the first time buyer in a way. And that's quite important to know. And in terms of customer data, because it tells us what customers are searching for um, when we have our own 
product page. When we, if we're selling, this is telling us something different than if we're buying. If we're buying, we think this is a badge that's helping us choose. If we're selling, we want to know what are people, what search terms are people putting in and maybe revisit our store pages accordingly if we're not Amazon's choice. What we also need to know is that there's a lot of Amazon's choices. So Amazon's choice for coffee beans is not the same as Amazon's choice for um, strong coffee or ground coffee. Amazon's choice is, for, is basically a search term um, report, if you like, that's publicly available to everybody. So this brand here, Solimo, um, is flavor of the morning for coffee beans. And that's not the same as bestseller. So that's a super well-known brand. The bestseller badge, which is the, or this one, orange one here, that's not based on search term. That's based on sales ranking. So bestseller means that it's in the product categories in coffee beans. Lavazza is winning that race and we can all go to our product pages or our competitors or any product we want to and find out who's the best seller. So if we go over here, if you go scroll down a product page on Amazon, you'll get to a section called product details. And um, I mean, I can, it probably, uh, if, I, if we go on here, let's look at uh, strong coffee. Um, uh, let me see if I just change the window so you know where we're at if we go if we go for strong coffee just so anyone who hasn't shopped on Amazon recently um, oh that's a rather strange name we possibly excuse me excuse the language of this particular blend we scroll down here halfway down to get to product information just halfway down the page and then we see this which is ground coffee so that's what I'm talking about and this is when we can find out who's in the running for best to most ground coffee we've got in this one i've got product details for men's onesies so if we click on that we click on the little blue thing here for the product category this is the best sellers in men's onesies this morning here in april <coughs> the men's shark onesie is obviously doing very well leopard skin quite important and uh, batman going third the best seller rank so that orange badge on the product that changes every hour so if you are trying to get your product up the rankings it depending on where you are in your product category whether it's men's onesies ground coffee um hamster food or whatever you need to probably try and be in the top 10 20 that will be a race that changes every hour but you can click on it and find out who your competitors are what are what are other people buying because best sellers is what people are buying um, in a product category rather than on a search term. So those are some real starters for 10 in terms of what's so special about Amazon data. And I just want to make sure um, before I gallop along, I see we've had some other people joining. Thank you very much for, for joining the webinar. Is there any questions about that particular thing? There's Amazon's choice based on a search term. You hover over the Amazon's choice badge. It'll tell you what the search term is. And if you're selling that type of product, you need to make sure that search term is in your product description and your keywords. Bestseller is a moving, movable ranking compared to other people in the category and it's based on sales. You can click on um, any of uh, the category when you're on a product page and find out who else is, what other people are buying in that category and that changes every hour. So what's so special about Amazon data is also that there's a lot of things we can find out without even having to be logged in to a seller account or a vendor account. And there's also uh, a discipline to going and looking what the customers are seeing on your product pages, what else they're seeing when they search for your things. Because sometimes when we're selling, we don't end up going and browsing on our product pages as if we were a client. And I'm sure if you have a website, that's quite similar. And part of this, the first part of this talk is seeing what can we see on the front end of Amazon that can help us understand our customers and our customer behavior better. So the second thing I want to look at in terms of what's so special about Amazon data is it's not as good as Google Trends and we can't see as much, especially if we're not signed into a seller account, but there are things on Amazon that we can um, use to figure out what people are searching for. So the next thing I wanted to look at was the search term. I'm sure you, you all have bought things on Amazon. And we know that if we search for a product such as face toner, Amazon will come up with a list of suggestions very much like Google does. 
and that gives us a lot of clues about what are the popular search terms. Here we've got face toner machine, which is a kind of different to a product, and all of the different pain points, if you like, or problems that people might have and want to solve with a face toner for acne, for sensitive skin, for oily skin. And again, this search I just ran this morning was for uh, facial cleanser, slightly different. And what Amazon is telling us here, we've got Amazon's Choice, we've got the bestseller, and what Amazon is also telling us is that people are buying products that are keyword rich, because some of these, uh, and I'm not a particular expert in facial cleanser, some of these are brand names even I've heard of that I've seen adver advertised on TV. Some of them are probably Amazon only brands that have maybe not existed in bricks and mortar stores i don't know I, i'm not in the market for a facial brush cleansing system um so i don't know whether pixnor is a well-known brand but i would suggest it's probably not but they've got all of the keywords facial cleansing we've got cleanser we've got brush that is telling us that people are buying when they don't know what to buy they'll buy a listing with a lot of keywords and a lot of reviews and um, if you're writing products on Amazon, you've got to make sure that whatever people are searching for, you've got in your product listing. If you're a really well-known brand, and depending how it's sold, Cetaphil I know is a very well-known brand, they maybe don't have to be so keyword rich because the brand is well-known. If you're not so well-known, you'll probably be stuffing your, the, the title up to the full 200 characters with the keywords. And that's what tells us here that these unknown brands have managed to get up the ranking and people like them because they're priced right, the pictures are understandable, and they've got the right words in the title. Another thing that you, if we go then click onto a product page, I've changed category here, we're getting here skateboards. So here, we're on a product page for a type of skateboard. And the Amazon, uh, if we, and not every product page will have this. We have the, the rubric customers who view this item also bought, excuse me. So what this tells us, is already insight into are people sticking to our brand or are they brand agnostic and browsing a lot of different things so if you go back to your own product pages you can well if you were mr osprey who sells osprey skateboards you can see that people are in the market for twin tip long boards whatever that is because there's a there's one here and also the kit that helps you mend your skateboard but they're not particularly brand agnostic there's a two other brands here in the more or less the same price point that people are also looking at. But that's telling you who your de facto competitors are. You may not have even heard of them, but that's what people on Amazon are browsing. Just wanna make sure that we, um, everybody here is okay, that we're following. No Q and A so far. So that's, that doesn't appear on every product page, but um, if, uh, depending on the category, you can view customers who view this item also bought. Um, and, and that's super useful data. Now, just to be clear, um, we should know also that this section here is an ad, and it's an ad for brands uh, that are selling directly to Amazon. It's a prime type of ad that you can't do if you're just a seller. So we have to know the difference between customer. This is actual data given, Amazon is giving to you about actual consumers. This here is just an ad and is being paid for. So that's really different. So we've got What's so special about Amazon data? It's telling us a lot if we know where to look. And who is buying our products on Amazon? We can find out who's buying our products by looking at what they also bought. That can give us a clue. And the key thing is looking at Q and A's and reviews to see who is buying and what do people think of our products. So we all know Amazon is famous for having reviews and people are quite engaged with reviews. So these are two reviews for two different products I found this morning. One of them is in the facial cleanser area. One of them is in the doggy bathrobe area, which I didn't know was a thing, and I'll explain about it later. It's really important as a seller that you listen to what your customers are saying and that you read what they're writing. And one of the obvious reasons if you're already selling on Amazon is that customers will give you the keywords for what they search for, what they think is important. So if you're selling facial cleansers, it may not be a first thing that you'll be mentioning that you can use it with a cotton pad, but obviously people are using that. I have to read through the, you know, 800 reviews to look at it. That if a lot of people are mentioning cotton pads, whether it 
the cleanser goes well onto a cotton pad or not, you need to be thinking, should you put that in the product description or the A plus content? So you're answering a query that customers have. Key ingredient, micellar water. Are you making sure that you've got your hero ingredients listed? Um, uh, the skin feeling, the aloe vera, all of these things. If you're rewriting your product copy on Amazon, you want to go back and look at all of those things. Uh, similarly, <laughs> with the doggy bathrobe, we have certain types of dogs that people are keen to know um, can they, can't use it with that dog. Is it value for money? Is it, well, this is an easier one to do. Um, and if I was in the market, if I was selling doggy bathrobes, I'd definitely be reviewing all of this and making sure that all of these customer pain points are in my product listing. Now, back to the question of who is buying our products on Amazon. You may or may not know, when you're reading the reviews, if you click on the name, here we've got Chloe Rayner, which is an easy one to know, you can find out what else that person has reviewed. So here I've got Chloe Rayner came up today, has only ever reviewed one thing, enjoyed the skin cleanser of this particular brand. Thanks very much, not really telling us, but if we wanted to engage with her, Nothing would stop us looking, at, looking her up on Facebook or LinkedIn and reaching out to her. It's against Amazon's terms of service to do it through the platform. They don't like you to do it, but people, if they do put their names against reviews, you can, you can know where to find them um, and see whether they are happy or unhappy. On the other hand, this was somebody that reviewed a, um, an internet mesh router that I found um, uh, recently. This guy, on the same day, has, re has reviewed three really different products. Uh, products he's reviewed 12 roof he's reviewed a book he's reviewed a mesh router and he's reviewed um, a skin moisturizer and given the same comment to each of them so that particular person we might ask is that somebody who's being paid five pounds a review by a facebook um seller as a seller who's found him on facebook should we be taking him into account if he's trolling us we might have to say actually it's not an unhappy customer it is a, um, it's somebody who's been paid to leave bad reviews, but you can tell that just by clicking on the name, just by clicking on the name here, it'll bring up that page and, if, and, and all of the other reviews they've done under that name. So that's quite a useful thing. Um, if you've got bad reviews, you may be able to persuade people to improve them, even though that is against Amazon's terms of service. And um, you can also find out who people who are engaged and, and reach out to them. The other thing in terms of what do our customers want and who are buying our products is what they're putting in the question section. So again, I'm gonna just stop this a sec. I'm sure many of us know what I'm talking about, but I will um, just switch back to an Amazon page so we're all on this clear. So on the Amazon page, further down at the bottom, we've got the customer questions and answers. So this is for a coffee brand and there are lots of questions going on and we can click down and find even more questions this is a great place to go and check your consumer engagement and um, see what people are asking what are their pain points are their pain points included in your product coffee so this guy is asking what the, the mix is have we put that in our product um, description um, is this instant coffee no it's not instant coffee like have you made it clear in the product description this is instant coffee Another, as a, as, a, as a seller or somebody that helps sellers, I want to know what people are asking. And as a buyer, I want to know that it's the company itself that is answering the questions. So in this particular brand, then obviously well on to Amazon and how to run it. As soon as there's a question, Cafe Society, which is the seller, is answering that question almost every time. In this question, in this instance, they haven't. Here they have, here they have. Um, if we switch to the, the other example I pulled up, which I think was a, I think was a beauty. Let's have a look. I oh, know it was my, bath, my doggy bathrobe guy. In this instance, it's a customer who's answering the, oh, excuse me, it's a customer who's answering the Q&A here. It's a customer who's answering here and a customer answering here. That does not build as much trust. It's the social proof thing that we all need with e-commerce. If you are not, as the brand owner, answering the questions about products you're selling and no one in your team or you have not put a reminder in every, every day or got email reminders come up to answer those questions. You are not talking to, you're not listening to your customers, you're not answering their queries fundamentally, and you're allowing other people to be representatives of your brand. So 
we can tell and I can, you know, it's very easy to tell if you go on any product page, how actively the brand is managing its listings by seeing are they ever answering the questions or is it always somebody else that's answering them? So these are all the things that we can find from the front end of Amazon. I mean, the list is endless because I haven't even gone into ads. I'm not going into advertisements on this particular webinar because that's not really customer data. It's more about your competitors. There's a lot we can understand about what people are advertising on and how successful that is by using the front end of Amazon that everybody has access to, to just kind of second, degree, second guess what's happening. So I'm gonna leave the front end now, but there is a lot more that we could look at, but it's not for today's seminar. And I want to go um, to the back end of Amazon. So this is gonna be super relevant to people who already have a seller account um, and um, um, or have clients that have a seller account or a vendor account, because this is what you see on the back end. If you, and anyone, frankly, you can say, you can start off by selling anything on Amazon. You know, I sold secondhand books for years. Um, uh, when I was on Amazon, I had access to my seller accounts and um, anyone can set up really, really easily, um, at least by putting in an email. And this is what we're going to look at now. How can you understand your, your consumers by the back end of Amazon on the seller account? So one of the fun things, you, the, one of the fun options we have is when, when we're on Amazon Seller Central in Europe, we've got a bunch of different areas, catalog, inventory, advertising, reports, performance, a bunch of different things. Reports, hey, I'm you know, a reformed nerd, but I am a nerd. I love the reporting function. We have lots of different things we can look at. I just want to pause for brand analytics. So this is for people that are selling a brand that they own on Amazon. If you're selling Cocoa Pops on Amazon and drop shipping, may not work out for you, but if you have your own brand on that, this is a fairly new function. It used, it's been around for ages for vendors, but on seller not. So if you haven't looked at this part of the thing for ages, it might be a good time to have a look. This is what we can find out. This is the big announcement of the day. Um, and I post it on LinkedIn actually, <laughs> it's the big announcement of the week. Over Easter weekend, the number three things that people were searching for in the UK, paddling pool, hair clippers for men, Sun loungers, face masks, which has been number one search for about three weeks, slipped to number four. This is what the people of Britain want in their lives right now, because many of you will know Google Trends, and Google Trends is where you can see what people are searching for on Google. Amazon hides this in brand analytics, and you can't access it unless you're a seller. But this will tell you the same thing, what the top 10 searches are at the moment. And um, I'm sure that will resonate with many of us who, um, <laughs> who have been enjoying the hot weather and have been thinking about, should I have a paddling pool for the kids or should I crack out a new barbecue? Um, it's certainly true that in the first few weeks of lockdown, and we can still see it um, remaining in the top 10 or the top 15 searches as a thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. Everyone's, <laughs> at some point people are bored out of their minds and can't talk to their family anymore. Specifically a thousand piece jigsaw puzzles have remained in the top 15 across, cause I've checked and I'm a nerd across England, France, Germany, Spain, and Italy for the last three or four weeks, and we can see that from brand analytics. So if we're in the children's games category, we're on a winner <coughs> if we're selling puzzles. But more seriously, there's other things that we can use on brand analytics to search for trends about what do people want at the moment. So this is just the, sale, the ranking. It's not the number of searches, it's what people searching most on brand analytics. This is what I found out today, news just in about doggy bathrobes. So please just consider this. I didn't know it was a thing and I swear I did not know this was a thing until this morning because what I wanted to give you an example of what we can do with brand analytics and I search for bathrobes. So we can go into brand analytics and search for search. And we either do no search term and that'll give us the top 10 or we can search for a particular word. And here I've got bathrobe. I've got for the month of February, how was bathrobe doing as a search term? And for the month of March, how was bathrobe doing it as a, uh, as a search term? And what we can see is the bottom has fallen out of the dog bathrobe market, everybody. In February, dog bathrobes were trending at 64,000 in the search frequently rank. In March, dog bathrobes have gone down to 168th thousandth search frequency. However, men's bathrobes are on the up. Very low search in February. They are almost as popular as doggy bathrobes in March and the people of Britain are leaving their dogs behind and, um, and clothing their men 
or because people are housebound longer, they want new bathrobes and um, just to lounge around. And that's why uh, male men bathrobe would be much more searched for. But joking aside, brand analytics will allow us to make this type of comparison. It's not super easy and it's definitely not as beautiful as Google Trends, but we can, we can figure out what people are searching for and also what is the most likely click data in on that. So Zella, that, um, the doggy, the dog, this particular brand here that I discovered, uh, in February was the most likely search for likely clicked ASIN after that search term. Uh, in March, there was another one. Um, and actually, if you on brand analysis, you can keep scrolling along to the top five ASINs that are clicked on. That will tell you what your customers, you know, what your customers are considering. Uh, what what are your competitors? Um, um, what are, you, are your competitors getting in on that search term? And then you can ask yourself, what well, if everybody's clicking on that brand? Is it a price point issue? Have they got a better initial photograph? What's the, they've got better keywords, like what's the deal? Why are those guys winning? And you can do that if you go into brand analytics. So I'll just take a pause there. Are there any questions so far about what I've covered in terms of question and answers, reviews, and using brand analytics to understand how, um, how consumers are looking for things on Amazon that might be relevant to you? Okay, that's good. That sounds, it's all pretty straightforward. So the next thing I'd like to look at, um, which people that know me will know that I'm obsessive about it as well, is conversion rates, because it's very often overlooked in Amazon, because it's so hard to find. And no one likes, no one, no companies want to make, look at conversion rates part of their monthly reporting until I turn up. And then sometimes that works out. So in addition to brand analytics, which is something just like Google Trends, we can spend hours looking for what people are looking for and what are they clicking on. And we can really do a deep dive into what our products are if we want to know how our competitors are going. Um, what do we care about is whether people are buying more of our stuff, right? So for those of you who are on the e-commerce webinar on Monday, um, this slide came up. Um, on Amazon, we only have sessions, which is how many people were looking at our stuff, page views, how many times that they looked at it and then conversion rate, who actually converted and bought our product. We, uh, we don't have basket abandonment as a really key metric on Amazon, especially if you're a seller. So all of this webinar is really for us to say, can we convert more people who are uh, aware of our products and considering a purchase into actual buyers? And as long as we're already selling on Amazon, there's a bunch of beautiful data that will allow us to make actions and, and actually figure out how we get more people to buy. So this is from business reports in Amazon Seller Central. Let me just slide back a bit so we know where to find it. Amazon Seller Central, go to reports, go down to business reports. This is where you can see all the graphs of your monthly sales and your yearly sales and your week to date sales. But if you go to detailed sales and page traffic, we'll get a beautifully horrible Excel that you can, um, view in Amazon or you can download as a CSV. And the key points I want to show you here, and this is um, one of my clients, I've got, I've anonymized the data, you can't see what they are. We've got ordered product sales, like how much do people buy? There's a B2B element, what we care about here. This is like the hard cash. This is what they bought the first seven or eight SKUs. And then we have the sessions, how many people found the product, how many people then clicked on the product again, what percentage of them then bought it? These are the figures I'd like to look us to concentrate on, given the sales funnel sessions, page views, conversion rate. And, and to put it simply, if your sessions are under a thousand a month and you've been selling on Amazon for a couple of months, you have a, you have a problem that people aren't looking at your stuff. They're not finding it for whatever reason it is. That's based on my experience, the baseline of where you need to be around a thousand. So we can see this particular person, this particular company, they sold six grand's worth of product X last month. Not so many people saw it as product Y, which had 1,622 sessions and sold five grand. So if I was working with this company um, on, their, on their optimization, I would say, what is it with these products that people aren't seeing them? There's something about it when you do a search term for, I don't know what it was, doggy bathrobe, whatever it is, People are not even clicking. Their sessions is whether people are clicking on the product and the title to look at the product page. If people aren't clicking, why is it? This one has a problem of popularity. These ones don't. 
So if you remember anything, it's if your sessions are under a thousand a month and you're selling a reasonably priced competitive product, which, um, which is in, you know, more or less optimized for Amazon, then it's like, let's go back in and make this better. The second thing is the unit session percentage. It's the conversion rate. So we can look at page views as well, but I just want to concentrate here on conversion rate. This is the percentage of people that looked and then bought. So what we know from this is, although not so many people actually click on it, when they do, they buy it. So why don't we get more people to look at it? Because once they do click on the page, they buy it. So that's really good. 46 is insanely good um, for unit session percentage. Whatever that product is, people love it. However, the one that had a lot of looks had few people, percentage of people that were buying it. 20% is still pretty good. So we might say, why is it that people love to look at it, but they don't want to buy it? It could, be, it could be a price issue, but they knew the price when they clicked on it. What is it about the, um, the product that is not converting when they're on the page? And then we want, might want to do a page audit of what can we improve on the page? So the hard and fast rule that I have, um, again, come up out of my experience is if your sessions are under a thousand per month and you've been selling on for a couple of months, you need to do something. And that something is not just to throw money at marketing. And if your unit session percentage, i.e. your conversion rate, is less than 10%, then you need to do something as well. And to be really clear here, if you only have 20 people browsing your product, that is not statistically relevant to say, oh, okay, I have a 20% conversion rate, because basically nobody saw your product in the first place over a month. So that type of metric is telling us something about the stickiness of the people that are browsing on Amazon and whether they actually like what you're selling. So this is um, the action points from the webinar today because you know, a lot of this is really gonna be based on your products or your clients' products and what they're selling and what you can learn is go review all of the things I've showed you, the action points for today. Have you looked at your own product pages lately from the front end? Do you know what people are saying about your product? Do you know what people are reviewing and asking questions on your product? Have you looked, if you can, about what other people are buying once they browse your product and done something about it? What do your customers want? Have you answered the questions and dealt with bad reviews? Then the other challenge is to download your business report for a month, for three months, months on months, do whatever you like, just download it already and prioritize the products that have sessions of less than a thousand per month. And this is again, not for new sellers, but for people who've been selling at least three months and have got traction and have got sales. Sessions of less than a thousand and conversion rates of less than 10% because those are your easy wins. Amazon is telling you your customers, um, your customers don't like it. Amazon is telling you with hard facts, so go do something about it. So um, does anybody have any questions about those particular facts? Because that's quite a lot of data to bring in. No, we all clear on, on where I'm going with that. Which is great. I'm glad, I'm glad that it's quite, um, it's quite straightforward. So we'll, we'll move, I mean, in, in which case, oh, oh, hang on, oh, it's a question answer. Oh, it's just something's popped up, awesome. Okay, Abby, what would be a statistically significant number of sessions to review? That's a great question. If you've been selling on a while, and I believe you have with your company, all sessions are statistically significant in the sense that if you've only got 20 people a month looking at your product, that's telling you that people aren't looking at your product enough. So for sessions, it's um, every, every number is relevant. For sessions, if you've got 20, if you've got 10, if you've got 5,000, they're all useful data. That means that when someone searches for pooch, pooch bathrobe, your thing comes up and people are clicking on it. So that's all you need to know. If it's 20 a month, you can do something about it. If it's 1,000, you can do something about it. However, what's statistically number um, significant for conversion rate, I would say in the mid hundreds. So um, three, 400 upwards, I might look at the unit session percentage and say, oh, okay, you've got, um, let's say 500 upwards. If you've got 10% of people converting, you've got 500 sessions a month, that's probably significant as a conversion rate. But as sessions, any number is important because you need to know already, are people actually clicking on that uh, on your product description when you buy it.
Is there any other questions that's, uh, that's coming up from, from what I've covered? Here's another one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's all right. It's my pleasure. So we've got um, the, the issue of, let me just go back and summarize. Take action. Go and look at your stuff if you are selling. If you are, are not selling, then you have um, just got a load of fun stuff to nerd out of on Amazon and just really kind of get, take a second guess of what's going on on the platform. As I said at the beginning of the, the webinar, we are running some others this month, which you may be interested in. I've got next Thursday, writing for e-commerce, how to sell more in words. And this is specifically uh, product pages, product descriptions, that type of thing. Uh, unlock Amazon's hidden potential. That's more about growing on Amazon. If, you, uh, if you're just setting up or you're, you're already on it, how can you, what are the levers you can, you can make to grow on Amazon and how do you know what your competitors are doing? And then at the end of the month, I'm doing a webinar on how to launch a new product on Amazon. So that's for people who, um, probably it's appropriate for people that already have a product they know works somewhere else, i.e. on an e-commerce website or um, in, in bricks and mortar stores. I'm not a specialist in sourcing new types of products um, from China and figuring out have they got a USP, but I know lots of people who are, so if that is something you're interested in, I can put you in touch with those people. Um, but launching a new product on Amazon is, uh, is, is, is a skill. There are levers to pull, and if you're doing it in the UK, it's different than if you're doing it in Europe, and I can, I can walk you through that on that webinar. Uh, as I said before, once the Zoom closes, there is um, an opportunity for you to um, give me some feedback, tell me what else you'd like to have webinars about, and have a, a listening consultation if you'd like with me and a strategy review. And you can choose that option and make, uh, make the choice that's right for you on, on the form that, that pops up on, um, on Zoom after the webinar ends. Oh, there we are. So is there any other questions that anybody would like to cover? This has been a short and sweet overview of how to understand consumers on Amazon uh, from the front end and from the back end. So please do shout if there's anything else that you'd like to know, um, or otherwise we'll bring it to a close if, if you feel like you've got everything that you need to from today. Well, in which case I shall wish you all a beautiful afternoon. Um, for those of you uh, in the UK, for those all over the world, and um, re you know where I am, uh, it's Eloise at sell-beyond.com. Please reach out to me if anything crops up, if you'd like to um, shoot the breeze on anything else, and I'll definitely point you in the direction or of someone who can help, or I'll try my best to help you yourself. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope you learned something this afternoon. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>